those emphasis. Okay, so I wanted to start to do this because I gave myself this really, really, really intense work schedule, right? And it was so like, it was mind boggling. I had like, cause you know, I break my poems into like three acts, right? So I mm -hmm. had like act one, act two, act three. So I had so intensely structured like Tuesday from one to two work on this poem Camelot, act one, da da da. From three to four work on um, this different, you know, like this poem I have Precarious Rex, act two. From this one, so it was always like either doing research or actually writing drafts or doing something like that, but it was so, so intense. And, um, and it was all based upon just, cause I figured the world is shut down. All these things I wanted to do with people, they're all freaking out. They don't want to work. They're, they're scared to work or they don't know what to do. To put it that way, but they don't know what to do. So I'm like, well, the only thing I can control is myself and my own production. So I'm gonna just remain productive. I'm gonna keep doing that. Um, but eventually I just got kind of like, I, I can't just, I, I need to talk to people. I need to interact. I need to like exchange mm -hmm. ideas. So I couldn't just keep doing that. So I was like, okay. I was working on this thing with Jose Prado about uh, called the professor and the poet. And what we were doing was we were doing a, a thing with the professor and the poet. And what we we're doing there was um, that we were talking about capital and we were taking chapters of capital and each week for, for an hour, we would discuss a chapter of capital and like how it applied to, to life in COVID and specifically how it applied to the Chicano community. Right. And that was kind of like the model that we built, but you only get three free from B live. Right. And I needed four because it's four weeks in a month. So I'm like, all right, well, I'll buy the extra serve, I'll buy the extra week. But once I bought the extra week, that's 30 bucks. And I'm not gonna spend 30 bucks just to have one more discussion. So I'm like, well, I'll just interview people and I'll interview people to break up the monotony of this intense work schedule I'm giving myself. But then what had been happening is that I'm like a compulsive a recovering alcoholic. So I, I ended up happening to myself, right? So that I happened to me. You're recovered. So, You're not like recovering. It's been like that's years. True. I'm, re I'm recovered, like but I'm still compulsive as hell. I'm still like a workaholic. Yeah. I'm still like a, I'm still like, I, 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 once I start doing something, I can't stop. Right. So like, yeah. so then, so then like, you know, my, my, I mean, the best way to put it is that I'm a hard worker. And the other way to put it is that like, I'm fucking nuts. Yeah. You know? yeah, so yeah. It's like, like OCD. Well, it's OCD. Once you get going on something, and especially if it's good and this is good. So like, yeah, it's yeah, a really yeah. good thing. So and I'll sleep when I'm dead, you know, I'll sleep when I'm dead and I'll, 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 I'll you know, I'll, you know, how long am I, how long is this going to last? That everyone's going to be stuck in their homes. Right, so I'm gonna take advantage of this. I'm not gonna like be like, well, you know, just give myself a light work schedule. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bust my ass and and I'll, and I'll sleep for a whole week when this is done. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. like right now is the time I can do this, and right now is the time people are available. And so, like, yeah, so that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to get collect like oral histories from people and talk. You know, so that's that's kind of what it's about. And we and we've been live for about like two minutes, two three minutes. Oh, okay, okay, cool, yeah. good to know, good to know. Yeah, good to know, good to know. So so we're here this hour or this half hour uh, with mm -hmm. Beagle. Uh, Lafani, I'm really, really excited to talk to you, Bijal. This is part one. We're going to have part two. And yeah. if, uh, if, if uh, part one and part two go well, we'll have part three. If not, I'm sorry, um, Bijal. I'm still, mm -hmm. you know, I still love you. But uh, uh, No problem. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever, whatever you need. <laughs> Bijal, we met at an environmental march. You remember that? Yeah, I do. Yeah. 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 Was so that, the, yeah, what was it? Was it Earth Day? It was like climate march. It wasn't climate strike, but it was like, it, had, it was, it was, they're using climate as an adjective. Yeah. 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 And, which is, uh, I, yeah. Yeah. Which is good. The climate's very important. Um, uh, I was uh, introduced by uh, Ed Bagley. Mm -hmm. Junior, yeah. right? Junior. He, yeah. Junior. Not, not senior. Not senior, right. Okay. Not the lesser known. I mean, that was a long time ago. Yeah. But, but, but yeah. No, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, Ed Bagley Jr. introduced me and he, and he, he made sure to, um, so that I felt that I felt culturally honored said uh cross yours Matsudio cross yours. <laughs> do you remember that I don't I don't actually remember that that uh that part that like the transitional parts but I do remember that you gave uh you you read a poem and uh uh yeah and I remember that uh yeah, and then we started talking, and then uh, and I found out that you, uh, you know, you were uh, a filmographer. You were, uh, you know, you you uh, film editor. I mean, just a, just a, a man of of, uh, of um, motion and pictures. And so um, then after that, we had the chance to work together. But at the time, you were you were videotaping a lot for uh, for for uh, Occupy. Was that is that is that right? Yeah, yeah. There was like a media uh, tent there. Um, and was contributing to that. It was, was always contributing to the independent media in Pittsburgh, 
uh, in college and then and in high school. Um, and then sort of that sort of transfer, the indie media network uh, is really strong. Um, and uh, and that sort of translated into getting involved with with uh, the Occupy, like just anyone that was down for the cause um, and just basically producing material document from documentation to to um, you know to full length educational things to what have you you know yeah so uh, um, can you tell us about what what uh, what um, you know I want to break this into little chapters so we can talk about some of the work you did with uh, with um, the large outfit that I can't, I can't remember right now but they put together all those they put together all those films so you, you were working with them um, we'll talk about mm. them later when I do more when I, when I remember <laughs> to do more research brave new films I think brave it's, new I think films. you're thinking about films we'll talk about brave new films and we'll talk about your work uh, you know work filming Luis Rodriguez and, and and some other things but right now I'm just really curious about sticking with Occupy like what brought you to Occupy and how did you get involved with Occupy Media the media outlet yeah well I mean again, yeah again like so just going back to just becoming uh, conscious, class conscious, uh, mainly in college, radicalized in college, reading Marx, reading sort of um, Capital. Uh, and uh, that was a time when, you know, in high school I had done like Amnesty International and I had, had like wrote letters to like Pol Pot. And then when he died, I thought like, that my letters really like, you know, can, like they were like powerful enough that he was then guilt ridden and yeah. he saw the errors of his ways. And, um, uh, and I was so naive at that time. And yeah. then, um, so that, so then, you know, in college uh, you, you had, you know, the, the, the Bush era, the Bush administration. So you had like Donald Rumsfeld and like Dick Cheney and like, you had just like this obscene uh preposterous sort of claims of like these weapons of mass destruction and you kind of like you know and this is also you know you had the gulf war earlier so and, and you know when you see you know you, you you see people like yourself on the other side you know of this sort of um uh the the terrorists so to speak uh or the illegal or the criminals right the the ones who are um sort of uh by law need to be um, executed or imperialized or whatever. So uh, yeah, so then, so that kind of happened, uh, got arrested in DC um, at Freedom Park of all places um, in this sort of really illegal, just basically rounding up and uh, systematically rounding up and imprisoning uh, an entire group of sort of people, and these weren't. We were. We were. Uh, uh, yeah, we we were group. We were fairly harmless. It wasn't like we were out there with AK forty sevens and our shirts off in the town square doing something. I mean, you know, I mean, these were. We were, you know, college students who took a bus and slept on the floor of a church and you know, went to Freedom Park to play bongos and like hold signs, you know? Yeah. So why do you think, why do you think they take their shirts off when we're holding these guys? I mean, are they trying to like, 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 like are, I mean, I kind of think, I feel like that maybe, maybe that like, you know, every generation produces its revolutionaries, its reactionaries. So I, I kind of feel like maybe these people are like around my age and they remember the Rambo cartoon, mm. you know, not so much Rambo the movie, but the Rambo cartoon. Mm. Like when Rambo was like, he'd be like fixing his house or something with any even army pants with no shirt. Mm -hmm. and then he would like come and fight you, you know where? Like, cause realistically, if you're gonna like engage in combat, you probably should wear it. Probably should wear a shirt. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're really exposing yourself, right? <laughs> so I think it, it really is about that aesthetic, you know, of yeah. like, of like, I'm out here, I'm exposed. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I I think it's it's so it's such a. Uh, I think it's trying to it's trying to be as provocative as possible. And so, like, yeah. what's the most provocative way? I don't know. You know. Yeah. That's right. Um, but yeah, I mean, if those were were brown people or uh, black or brown people who were defying the COVID, you know, um, kind of uh, uh, issue the uh, policy to stay home and instead say instead 
you know, going to your, to your uh, town hall and bringing a semi-automatic weapon, um, you know, it's, it's really indicative of the kind of hypocrisy that uh, the state uh, is state condoned right now. So, um, yeah. Um, so anyway, so the, the question, how did I get involved in Occupy? So college got, you know, became politically conscious uh, then and um, uh, the, the uh, and then, you know, uh, came to LA uh, and Occupy happened. And so it was sort of a no brainer. It was, it was, um, of course I was gonna support this movement. Right, right. And so you come in with, you, you know, with you, you have this, um, where did you develop the technical skills though that you, that you, that you brought to the table? Yeah, so I, you know, I had went to, I had been making films in, in college. So in college, uh, I made a documentary on police brutality uh, in Pittsburgh. Um, uh, basically, uh, you know, the police there uh, are extremely corrupt. Uh, the Pittsburgh PD, uh, as with, every, you know, most every, um, you know, police force around, LAPD included, you know, um, so, so that happened and then so I was I was making films I was also doing you know I, I, I was doing um, these kind of light shows these like video light shows at yeah uh, uh, I, I was in art school also I was, I was in the art school and also the humanities and the science school I basically I, went, I started in the computer science school and then uh, went to study abroad and sort of uh, my eyes were opened to um, to the world I worked for a photographer a uh, medium format photographer in Italy. And um, we took pictures of like fruit baskets and like furniture for the Corriere della Sera. Um, and uh, yeah, and, and so that was, that was another, th that, that sort of informed a sort of artistic aspect of this, uh, of the technical side of things. And uh, yeah, and then that's sort of how it is. So I was like, I was basically in the, the film club in college and then came back and was in the film club. Yeah. Right. Um, I've had actually the great pleasure of, of, of or great uh, opportunity to work with you. Um, we actually produced a, uh, um, two, we produced two things together actually. Two video, two video projects, um, if you remember. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we did the History of Family and LA is Full of Pigs. You know, yeah. Going back to the, the... We did History of Family in um, record time. I think that was in, three days, two day, two and a half. It was like, it was a weekend. Part of the, um, yeah, part of that, that it was like a, some, it was, there was some, some uh, 48 hour international documentary association um, sort of festival. And we'll, we'll, uh, there was a theme around the show. I remember I had to add a word to my, my poem. Uh, it was portrait. It was portrait. I think portrait? it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was, it, that's what I, the topic I got was portrait. And so then I was like, I'm going to do a portrait on Matt Cedillo, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I had to be like, this is my portrait. I don't think it actually made it. I don't know if the editing was that bad, but it was, it was, uh, no, was, no, no, no. That was that. Then I do not speak to the lack of your artistry in this instance, but the lack of my own, I could not, <laughs> no, you, you didn't change I, anything. I don't think you had to change anything. We did it. It was like it was. It, it was perfect. It was spot on. It was already a portrait. It was our. It, there, there wasn't. You didn't need to say it. Be so literal. You know. It's like. Yeah. Uh, Why is the dirt swallowing your head? Oh, oh, the dirt. Oh, yes. and when you um, move, you like like sometimes you're like in nature. And oh, oh, like, oh yeah. So this is a virtual background. Um, yeah, this is a virtual background on Zoom that that they have um uh yeah so i i just it was on there from before actually i was uh, i was attending uh, a uh you know we're all doing zoom things so now it just comes up and um and so i just kind of leave it there i, I find yeah. it it's relaxing it's kind of in nature yeah well it okay yeah that's true but how does it relax you because i can i see it oh you see it too huh so it relaxes you you relax yourself. Oh, uh, yeah. It's just, it's just sort of, um, yeah, it puts me in the zone, you know, and like, yeah. you know, it's sort of, uh, I don't know. It, 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 yeah, it's like, it's like um, yeah, you know, we're you in nature back, now. Yeah, when you sink back, it's like you're, you're sinking. Yeah, out. yeah. If, that, I, if I do whoa. things like this too, see, look, this is yeah. like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And see, that's, uh, that's unsettling for me because it reminds me of the never-ending story. 
Really? Yeah, and you're like the little boy, you know, Atreyu. Like, and the horse is drowning. Jeez. <laughs> um, it's, it's okay. Troubling. <laughs> should we save the horse? Do we? Should we hit, try to save the horse now, or what do we do with the horse? Like, you you think the horse is drowning, so what should? Well, I what's, don't know. Your, what, what's your action are you going to take yeah, action on this drowning horse never any story with, like it ends with like uh, uh believing yeah yeah <laughs> it's i haven't seen it in a while i'm gonna be honest i was gonna try to play it off like i saw it and i know yeah. what you're talking about and i know the never-ending story is um it's a great title and um uh, I just keep thinking of like lamb chop. It's like nope. this is the song that never ends, and I'm like, it's not that. It's, it's like it just that. goes on and on. You know what I mean? Right, it's, right, it's, right. So it's not that. that. I know that, thinking. but I no, think no, I know no. what you're talking about. It's like it's like there's unicorns in the ocean at the end, and there's like a is that the one? It's like it's a big flying like dragon dog or something. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. a giant wolf that's trying to kill the kid, and he's got to go through the swamp of sadness or uh -huh. something like that. And he's going through the swamp of sadness, and the the the, the horse is drowning. And he's kind of drowning with it because the horse gives into despair. And then, like, the horse giving into despair is kind of stressful for him. So he starts giving into his despair. Yeah. And then oh, yeah, yeah. it happens. He gets saved somehow. I don't even know how that happened. And then the wolf traps him. And then he's, like, there talking to the princess. But then the kid reading the book has to believe in the book for, the, for, for everyone not to die because the nothing is swallowing them whole. And, I, you know, I don't really know what the moral of that story was, to be honest with you, looking back. Maybe that's like a topic of discussion. Maybe that's like a like a great films to like talk about, you know, uh, or like, you know, we, we all watch The Never Ending Story and then we sort of have like a, because I think a lot of people, it's, you know, that's an 80s movie. There's probably a lot of, a lot of your peers are 80s babies, yeah. right? So, uh, you know, whether you watched it as a young, young buck or whether you're, you know, experiencing it for the first time in an older yeah. age, like this could be like a really good sort of like, uh, you know, jumping off point for uh, for a discussion, you know, yeah, about to... horses too. I mean, horses are really interesting too. Just you, you bring that up, uh, you know, he, he, when your horse feels sad, you feel sad, you know, there's uh, 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 ancient civilizations that where they would bury their, there, there's one in Mongolia would bury their horses as kings, you right. know, like, cause the horse, they had like such reverence for the horse that they were, you know, um, they were almost like, gods you know they would carry people through battle and uh and yeah, great horses like, had big mausoleums they had like mo mo like a mobile society so they kind of like could that that was kind of the horse very important because they're moving around a lot yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um yeah but well, you uh, know what we're gonna have to save that for chapter two because hey are it's great i'm just happy to, so what number am i what number writer person seven 107 but you're going to be like Grover Cleveland. You're going to reappear. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, but this is great. I, I really, I really have enjoyed, uh, especially the educators and the activists yeah. that, uh, that you've had on and the teach, like the teachers, uh, really, um, uh, very powerful. So. Oh well, yeah, no, definitely. I, w I w and, I, and, 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 and for those watching now, I mean, me and B are really good friends. So it's like make little jokes and I would definitely, I, I'm definitely, uh, have every, had every intention of just doing a normal hour with you. But um, since you are my friend, um, I can subject you to- Yeah, you know, yeah, anytime. Kind of like you, yeah, but, yeah, no, no text me anytime. I did want to say like, I feel like uh, you, you had brought up one thing. I, I feel like I, 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 I've been putting them on in the background and then I like walk away. So I'm sorry yeah. I haven't been asking more poignant questions to like people. And a lot of times I don't know who it is. So it's, it's really helpful. Somebody was putting names in the comments and sort of like, who's that person? Like. What are they a little bit about them so that when you ask questions you can be a little bit more informed because I because uh, you know a lot of people I don't uh, I, I don't know but um, uh, but there's a concept called mesh networks that um, that's that's used for um, for uh, wireless um, uh, in, in, like making a wireless network where there is doesn't want one doesn't exist so there's like a scientific basis for it is what I'm saying yeah, and yeah. then and and you can so you can look it up like just Google mesh network. And I think this, this as a metaphor is really strong in terms of like mesh networking where it's like local topographies and local networks that, uh, that have like, a, there's like nodes that they connect to uh, non-hierarchically. So yeah. like, it just looks for any node, 
right? And like, yeah. uh, and, and it can directly connect to them and, and cooperate in a really efficient way by providing uh, internet access. In this case, in mesh networks, it's providing people internet access that aren't using Verizon or you know, any major corporate telecom that has their sort of like ownership of their information and ownership of their IP and, and, and so forth. So, uh, so an effective routing uh, in a way and, and transformation of, of inf information um, could happen through local networks that mesh networks that then create a global uh, mesh network. Right? I understood about 70% of that and I liked about 80% of what I understood. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it next time around. All right. Thanks, Matt. I appreciate you. All right, man. Talk to you later.